Great Jones, their outstanding guard has to be the king. They'll play me. Daryl Cruz, Devin Even. What's the tenure? Kirby Brooks on the two-pointer. Dallas Nichols wins the game. Alexander. It's a uh-huh. jump right in his face. Shoot it is Jones. Staten takes the ball to the left side, spins, shoots, layup, shot, good. Oh, yeah. He's got the Carter football. Javon Carter is in Trey Young's head. Butler into the lane, into traffic. It goes again. West Virginia has won its first Big East championship. They're going wild here at the Coliseum. So long, Big Blue. Hello, Golden Blue. The West Virginia Mountaineers are going to the Final Four. It is a great night to be a Mountaineer wherever you may be. What's going on, Mountaineer Nation? Welcome into the West Virginia Basketball Post Game Show here on the CRW Hoops side of things on the Country Roads webcast channel. Following West Virginia's exhibition game to, you know, tip off the season, I guess you could say, getting our first glimpse of the Mountaineers with new coach Josh Eilert and a lot of new faces. West Virginia, you know, the first half was a little shaky, but the second half they really right the ship and come out on top 85-78 to over George Mason. So, West Virginia gets the win in the exhibition, and we'll talk about some of the things that occurred throughout the game. But before we get too far, far into this, I want to lead this off, of course, with saying we got to send, you know, thoughts, prayers, good vibes, whatever you want to say there to a cook of cook. That was a very scary situation. I've certainly never seen anything like that in a basketball game I've been watching before. I mean, you know, multiple television timeouts, and then they even had to give the teams a five minute warm up because he was, you know, down for so long until they could get him up onto the stretcher and a scary situation for sure for sure so I want to lead this off saying you know first and foremost before we talk about the game um, you know real life stuff always has to come first so uh, thoughts prayers good vibes definitely out to a cook a cook and hopefully um, he is all right moving forward but the only information that we have on that as of now is uh, this from WVU men's basketball of course they shared this during the second half after he was, you know, stretchered off of the court there uh, from at WVU Hoops there on X. Um, an update, a cook, a cook suffered a medical emergency during the second half of tonight's charity exhibition game. He was transported to R- Ruby Memorial Hospital for further observation. More information will be provided when available. So hopefully we'll get an update on that uh, very soon. And uh, well wishes to a cook, a cook, and hopefully he is healthy and uh, well moving forward in the future because that was certainly – very scary situation, so I wanted to get that off uh, right at the top. But um, in regards to the game, you guys, be sure, you know, drop your thoughts there in the comments below, anything you got in regards to West Virginia basketball's performance. Um, in this one, like I said, first half may be a little bit uh, questionable about some things that were going on. I think some people i seen on social media were uh, in a tizzy, but uh, it may be a little bit more so than we should be over an exhibition game. But, you know, as Mountaineer fans were – passionate so we were a little bit worried with the first half play especially on the defensive side and that's at least how I was feeling but second half I thought they really performed a lot better played a lot better on defense and uh, I really liked what I saw from these guys I think that we're going to have a good offense this year with a lot of the players that we got I mean and this is without Raekwon battle of course as we know that waiver was denied but there are certainly some weapons on this West Virginia uh, basketball club as far as, you know, being able to score the basketball athleticism and great basketball IQ by a lot of guys I was very impressed with as well. So, you know, a bit of a mixed bag in some areas, but all in all, I think I came away pleasantly surprised with some players and pleasantly surprised with, you know, where the team can be offensively moving forward, and especially if they can, you know, get some of the things that they struggled with in this game corrected. You know, there's a very much hope for this team still yet, I think. Um, and we'll see what happens with that battle situation moving forward. But love to hear your all's thoughts as well. 
drop them in the chat there. Appreciate everyone that's tuning in here live. Uh, give us a like on the video if you would. It'll help us out a ton, um, whether you're watching live or on a playback. And uh, be sure and subscribe to us here if you're a WVU fan, Big 12 fan, college basketball fan. Helps us, helps you. Helps get more of this Mountaineer sports content out to Mountaineer Nation. John Kelly says the same things I say there in regards to a cook, a cook. Um, yeah, prayers for the big guy for sure. Hopefully he's all right, and hopefully we get an update on that here in the near future. Definitely, you know, scary situation, and thoughts and prayers go out to him. Uh, great win for WVU, though, for sure, John Kelly. Um, you know, it was both um, George Mason's head coach, you know, Tony Skin, and uh, Josh Eilert, kind of their first games as head coaches. You know, this I know it doesn't count towards their record, but um, getting that under their belt is very good for them to get that experience. It's their first first time both being a head coach. I think George Mason had already played another scrimmage as well. So good for them to get that um, you know experience in a game situation underneath their belt uh, before the season officially starts here. You know, in a few more days, and um, you get it to where it counts against your record. But yeah, all in all, I liked what I saw overall as well, John. You know, when you come out on top, you can't complain too much for sure. Uh, really impressed as well in a lot of area, a lot of areas. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, Leslie, I agree. Kenny, good to see you in here as well. Appreciate you all tuning in and chiming in. Timothy Green, see you in here, man. Let's go Mountaineers indeed, as always, man, as always. David Friedline says, not too impressive. New team, same old. No foul shooting. Wouldn't even been close if hit their free throws. Defense is not good either. Rebounding, better get better before league play for sure. Yeah, definitely. That's... You know, the positive side of that, David, I agree with a lot of things you said there. Uh, but, you know, the positive side is at least through non-conference, they should be able to get some things better to where they're more cohesive. we got to remember there's a lot of new faces on this team. You know, not very many returnees. we got a couple of returnees in the starting lineup. But, you know, all in all, it's mainly a lot of transfers in. You know, brand new coaching staff as well doing some different things on offense. I think that's working well. Defense definitely has to come around. Rebounding definitely has to come as, around as well. But I think, you know, a lot of those struggles is, you know, in part to the first half, you know, a Cook, a Cook, and Jesse Edwards were both in foul trouble. And, of course, we'll see what a Cook, a Cook status is moving forward. Fingers crossed for positive news there because West Virginia is going to need both those big men, and if they get big men, and if they get in trouble, we're going to see West Virginia struggle in the first half as they did in this game. I think, David. So, yeah, I agree with a lot of things you said there. And depth is certainly a concern uh, for this team when it comes to that. There's not very much depth there in the front court. Um, Ernie B says prayers are up as far as the game. Good effort to fight back and pull it out. Obviously, a work in progress. Let's go. Exactly, Ernie B. And that's a great way to put, put it, man. Appreciate you tuning in and chiming in. Work in progress, indeed. Uh, that's what this team's going to be here as they, you know, continue to progress throughout this basketball season. You know, just now getting set to tip it off. I think there's certainly some good things you can build off of, or there's some negatives you need to improve on for sure. But, you know, that's to be expected. A lot of young guys, a lot of new faces, new coaching staff, you know, just getting their feet wet so you know i think a lot of the struggles you know were kind of something that you would expect to see when all those factors are at play so definitely a work in progress but like you said they had that fight in the second half and that's what you know impressed me the most in this i guess was you know there was even a point where they got down double digits but they you know never kept back uh, fighting battled back in the game every time and in the second half uh, played much better defense than they did in the first half and uh, was able to get the win, and that's, you know, what matters at the end of the day is just getting that W. John Kelly says, good to see some basketball, and yes, they will need to improve, but played with grit and heart. Well said, John. Well said. Appreciate you guys tuning in and chiming in. Encourage you guys, of course, drop any other questions, comments, concerns you got there in the chat. I uh, want to touch on some notes I took uh in regards to the game, uh, starting five for West Virginia was uh, Kerr Crease at the point and then Seth Wilson at the other guard, Josiah Harris at the forward. Uh, and I was interested to see there if it would be uh, Harris or Slzinski. I knew both of those guys had the potential to be starters. Looks like it's going to be Harris for the time being. And then, of course, the big men were a Cook, a Cook, and Jesse Edwards. Uh, as I said, you know, Harris and Slzinski, I thought it was a toss-up as to who would start there. Harris got the nod, which meant Slzinski was kind of the first man off the bench operating as the sixth man for this club. And I thought he performed really well coming in. What did he have? Nine points in the first seven minutes he was in the game. Ended up scoring over 20 points in the game. I think he ended up with, what, 21 or 22. Uh, Jesse Edwards had 21 points as well. I think that was kind of, you know, more something that we expected was Jesse Edwards to kind of be the go-to guy for this team. And 
Certainly, this team seems like it's going to go as he goes. Need him to stay on the court. Uh, did a good job in the second half, staying out of foul trouble until the very end there. Um, ended up with a great stat line. I, I saw Ethan Bach uh, tweeted out. I can't remember. I think off the top of my head, it was something like 21 points, seven rebounds, three blocks, two assists, and two steals, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, a uh, great game from Jesse Edwards. And if he's going to have stat lines like that, that's going to be great for West Virginia. Throughout the season, if Slzinski's your sixth man and he's scoring that much, that's going to be, you know, important as well because that's one thing that we've been saying when we knew when we found out that Raekwon Battles waiver was denied was West Virginia was going to need some of these other players to step up and maybe be more be counted upon to be more scorers than they thought they would have to be in the past. That includes you know Kirk Creesa, who's a pass first guy, but you saw him shoot the ball well in this game. Also, so, you know, he stepped up, I thought, played pretty well overall. And then Slazinski, I was very impressed by. And then getting into some of the bench guys, we, when you talk about those youngsters, how about Offrey Neve? I mean, that's a guy that's a true freshman that I thought was certainly going to be a developmental guy that I didn't know if he would get into the mix too much. But, you know, he's one of the, you know, second or third guys off the bench for West Virginia and uh, really showed some great athleticism in this game. And I thought he had great basketball IQ. I mean, started it off with a backdoor cut and and Slazinski found him, uh, and he dunks the ball. And then a few plays later, he has an assist to Slazinski. Uh, later in the game, he had a great lob to Jesse Edwards. He had a dunk of his own, had a great uh, play where he has stolen inbounds pass uh, that uh, George Mason was trying to throw in from under their own basket. So I was really impressed by offering to Vade that he's already that far ahead in his game. I think he has a a lot of potential throughout his uh, West Virginia career. So, you know, that's uh, certainly a bright spot when you're talking about newcomers that kind of I wasn't expecting to be uh, playing as well as he was in this game. So uh, certainly something I had there. I'll touch on some more of my notes here. Let's see. Uh, got some more comments in here in the meantime. I'm going to take a swig of my water. Exactly, John. Great point there. About 10 days till the Missouri State opener that really tips off the basketball season officially. And that's what's great about the timing of this scrimmage too, right, is that you get uh, a chance to, you know, learn and correct some things ahead of, you know, your season your season officially tipping off. So probably expect a more polished version of West Virginia against Missouri State, I'd say. And um, certainly this can only help those, you know, chances in that season opener to look even better than you did in this one, and I expect West Virginia to do just that. Uh, Kenny says he loves all the blocks from Jesse Edwards. Believe he's getting comfortable with the team. I do too, Kenny. I think that uh, way he's going to be, you know, an excellent rim protector. We haven't had really anything like that since Sags, and I think he's got the potential to be, you know, even better at it than Sags because you know Sags was a guy that's, you know. Not a knock on Sags. He was incredible at blocking shots. I'm just saying Sags was a guy that, you know, wasn't exactly the tallest. He was, what, you know, 6'8", 6'9", so he would have to go up, you know, and he was incredibly athletic at timing the, and blocking shots high in the air. Jesse Edwards can do that, but also what Jesse Edwards gives you that West Virginia hasn't had in a long time is he's just super long, and you saw him affecting shots even when he wasn't blocking them. He did have the three blocks in the game, which is impressive, but he does a great job of being, you know, vertical uh, when he's down low and making it really tough to score over him and does a good job of not fouling at times. I know he fouled out in this game, but you saw in the second half he was doing a great job of that, really affecting a lot of the shots and, you know, almost, you know, just playing in the in the center down there, similar to how he played in that zone in, at Syracuse. And I think I wouldn't be surprised to see West Virginia utilize some more zone defense this season because that's something that, you know, he's comfortable with having played that his whole career at Syracuse. And he's, uh, yeah, certainly going to be an excellent rim protector, Kenny, for sure. I love seeing that as well. Uh, Timothy says he really liked the Mountaineer Maniacs doing their job. It was great to see again. Yeah, sounded like an awesome atmosphere in that one, especially for an exhibition. And even the game was getting a little contentious at times. There was a couple uh, flagrant foul calls and stuff. So, you know, it's good to see this team that has that kind of grit to them already, even just, you know, for an exhibition game. I think they're going to be fun to watch this season. And, you know, I mentioned leading into the season, I was excited to see West Virginia be a team that, you know, played a little bit more faster pace on offense. They, you know, would probably spread it out a little bit more. I think you saw that a lot of four out, even some five out at times when Edwards was in foul trouble with a cook in the first half. And how about the lobs? You know, you saw it, you know, we knew Kirk Reese would be throwing them around, but you saw offering of a throw one. I think Slazinski threw one and that's going to be fun to watch this season. Jesse Edwards getting back screens and hitting backdoor cuts and uh, slamming it down on people. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch that as well. 
I've seen somebody on uh, social media say, are we Lob City now? I mean, we could be. You never know. Uh, John Kelly, yeah, five players, six or nine, six, nine or better. Um, great link to this team for sure. I love, you know, Slazinski's game. That's really going to be an advantage because it's going to pull people out of the paint and give Jesse Edwards more room to operate in there. And you can do a little high, low action when he's in the game. And same goes for Josiah Harris. They're very similar uh, type games as far as both being able to shoot from the outside. I think Josiah Harris gets the nod in the starting lineup because he's probably our best offensive rebounder on this club. But uh, Slazinski has great uh, shooting stroke and form out there from the outside and looks really good uh, shooting the ball and is going to be a great uh, guy coming off the bench. And if he does continue to do that, we're talking about a guy that could be, you know, sixth man of the year in the conference or something. Uh, Curtis D316, appreciate you tuning in and chiming in too, man. He says this team has a ton of potential. Hopefully A Cook, A Cook is okay and Battle gets his waiver. Yeah, fingers crossed, man. You know, continue. Can't say that enough. Prayers for A Cook, A Cook, uh, for sure. And, you know, the battle situation, I, I hope, you know, we can get positive uh, news on that. And uh, speaking of that, that reminds me, uh, Jim Justice had said he was going to write a letter and he actually did do just that. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Uh, I believe it was Ethan Box shared it on Twitter earlier today. I can uh, share it on the screen with you guys if I can find with you guys if I can find it here uh, really quickly. Let's see here. I know I just saw it on the feed. It I might have liked it actually. Let's see if I can find it in our likes here on our social media real quick. Bear with me, guys. Ah, here we are. All right, see if I can share this. Uh, since you brought it up, Curtis reminded me. Appreciate you, man. Uh, but uh, here's the letter that uh, Ren Baker wrote uh, to the NCAA president. Uh, I'm not Ren Baker, excuse me. Jim Justice wrote to the NCAA president, uh, Charlie Baker, as you see here, Ethan Box sharing this on social media. Um, I'm not going to read through all of it there, but, you know, I'll pull it up here on the screen so that if you guys, you know, watching it live, want to pause it for a second and read it, you can. Or if you're watching it on a playback, of course, probably be more convenient that way. Um, it scores in two pages, or if you want to look it up there on Twitter yourself, you can, X, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but he did indeed write a, you know, great letter that hopefully has an impact and maybe – West Virginia is putting enough push on the NCAA that this approval, uh, you know, appeal process will work out for West Virginia and Raekwon Battle can be eligible for the Mountaineers this season. That would be great to see because um, it would definitely make a big difference, Curtis D. And of, of course, a cook, a cook makes a huge difference. West Virginia is very thin in that front court, as I mentioned earlier. A cook, a cook, and Jesse Edwards really the only, you know, big, big man West Virginia is, you know, comfortable with playing, especially at the center position right now. I know you've got Oliver Cobb on the roster, but don't know how much he's going to be able to uh, see the floor this season. And then, of course, Raekwon Battle, that's just a guy that could be the leading scorer on this team, could be your go-to guy in clutch situations when you really need a basket. So uh, having Raekwon Battle, it can't be understated how big that would be for uh, West Virginia. But uh, appreciate you bringing that up, Curtis. He reminded me of that and wanted to – share that momentarily there and see where I was at, see if I can catch back up to my spot in the uh, comments now. Um, Curtis, D, Curtis D said, Ethan Box said a cook, a cook was texting the team after the game uh, per Quinn Slazinski. Oh, that's awesome news. I appreciate that update as well, Curtis. Uh, great to hear. You know, I was kind of um, hopeful that when they decided to resume the game and continue, you know, to finish out the final, you know, what, 15 minutes, of this exhibition that that was positive news that a cook, a cook was, you know, probably going to be okay. Cause I felt like if it was something that um, they felt like was really um, pressing that they would have immediately canceled the game. And, you know, the team probably would have went to the hospital uh, with him, you know, you would think or something like that. So the fact that they chose to resume the game, I was hoping that that meant that it was going to be, you know, positive news in regards to a cook, a cook. And sounds like that may be the case. So, Appreciate that update. Good to hear that he's, you know, great, uh, in, in good enough spirits to be texting the team and stuff at least. So that's awesome after um, how scary that that looked. Um, Leslie Roberts with another update here. Appreciate you guys sharing this uh, in here with us. Uh, I haven't got a chance to check out any of the postgame stuff. I went here live here immediately after everything ended. So haven't got a chance to check out any press conference and stuff. Planning to do that later tonight, hopefully. But I appreciate you, Leslie. Coach said that a cook, a cook is stable and they will monitor him overnight. No specifics just yet. Uh, so good to hear that he is in stable condition at least. Uh, that's great. And continue to 
give those thoughts and prayers to a cook, a cook, and hopefully continues to receive more positive reports out of that situation uh, for us throughout uh, Mountaineer Nation here. Um, Timothy Green says, I just want to say that I always enjoy your show, Jordan. I really appreciate that, Timothy. It uh, means a lot, man. We always enjoy you and your great insights on here as you tune in and chime in here. Always a great loyal Mountaineer fan, as is everyone else here that you know watches this here, whether it's live or on the playback. We really appreciate you guys, and I encourage you guys, you know, drop your thoughts here in the chat if you're on here live. If you're not and you're watching on playback, you can leave them in the comments. I'll try and respond in text form, but do us a favor. You can really help us out just by hitting that thumbs up button. really helps this video's performance and future video's performances here on the channel. And be sure and subscribe to us if you're a WVU fan. Plenty of Mountaineer sports content coming to you right now with both of these sports running simultaneously, football and basketball. We'll be reporting on them both here on the Country Roads webcast. But uh, see if I got anything else in my notes that I wanted to touch on. I won't keep you guys too much uh, later. I know uh, we all want to get some shut eye, get ready to uh, catch the Mountaineers tomorrow not tomorrow in Orlando. First, you know, noon kickoff of the season, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, it's going to be something uh, that we're not used to yet this season. Might need to get a little extra rest tonight. But uh, uh, first four minutes, thought the offense looked really great. You had Edwards score the first bucket of the season on a mid-range jumper off an inbounds play. And uh, I didn't know Jesse Edwards had, you know, such a smooth stroke from the mid-range personally. So uh, that was great to see. And then, you know, he scored again uh, back-to-back buckets, the second one coming inside as they fed him in the paint. So kind of, you know, showed you right away who West Virginia was going to be, you know, looking to as their go-to guy as kind of expected. And then, you know, Seth Wilson with a three off a crease assist. And then a Josiah Harris mid-range jumper off an Edwards assist. And I thought Edwards did a good job passing the basketball this game. I think you see, I, I said he had a couple assists, and both of them seemed like uh, they were in uh, good at good times. That was the first four minutes of offense for West Virginia there that I kind of jotted down some notes from. Uh, two early fouls on Jesse Edwards heard, obviously talked about that a little bit. Uh, a lot of fouls were called in general in this game. I think, you know, one thing if you're watching, you know, that's been something that's been a trend in college basketball lately. And there were reports, you know, throughout this offseason that, that there was not going to be many charges called. There was going to be really Aaron on the side of calling everything a block. And I certainly think that proved to be true. There were a ton of plays in the first half I can think of, at least three or four off the top of my head that looked like, you know, players had taken charges, both us doing it. You know, I think Kirk Creasa did it a couple of times and looked like George Mason had taken a couple of charges as well, and they were all called blocks. Uh, so it certainly seems like that is uh, proven to be true and going to be the case. Uh, throughout this season, um, Kerr Creasa did hit his first three-point attempt. Love seeing that. And then I had that and one as well that I believe was a four-point play, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, you know, Kerr does show that he can shoot the basketball, even though it's not his preference to be a score-first guy. I think he uh, showed some good things in this game. I mentioned Slazinski standing out. Uh, first players off the bench for West Virginia before offering Neve, who I already talked on a little bit earlier, were uh, Kobe Johnson and Pat Sumnick. Let's see, um, I've talked about that great backdoor cut by Neve, uh, that nice sequence for him. Uh, the first half, WVU's guards, I thought, struggled to play uh, defense a little bit on the ball. Uh, 62% field goal percentage for George Mason in the first half. Got to do a better job of that. Thought that they definitely tightened up defensively in the second half. I think George Mason had, what, uh, 44 points in the first half, if I'm not mistaken. So cut that down a decent little bit there in the second half. Played better, played better defense. Um, rebounding is definitely the concern that I'm looking at for this team. Got to do a better job of that and defense. Uh, certainly that's the areas that West Virginia is probably looking at and circling after this game. And, of course, keeping their star players out of foul trouble. Kirk Reese had three first-half fouls, and we mentioned uh, Jesse Edwards uh, fouling out of this game as well. But um, how about Jesse Edwards at the end of this game? That's probably kind of my final thoughts that I've got to add um, here that I have jotted down in my notes. You know, prior to that, right there at the end, he really, I think, was the one that helped West Virginia secure this victory. Um, what was it? He had two three-point plays and two blocks, you know, on what, six subsequent possessions there, offensively and defensively, and, you know, was a mini run because of Jesse Edwards and just almost took over there at the end and wheeled West Virginia to victory. So, you know, really impressed by his performance, and I mentioned Slazinski as well. So definitely thought there was plenty of bright spots in this game uh, for West Virginia. But I'm take a swig of my water, guys, and then I'll touch up on your all's comments one more time and uh, get up out of here before too much longer.
Oh man, my mic was muted. How long have I been muted, guys? Don't even realize that. But uh, anyways, sorry guys, I just now realized that it was muted. Don't know how long it was muted for. Not the first time I've done that. If you guys have followed along here, you know that I've done that on a live stream before. <laughs> I need to start wearing my headphones, man. I, you know, I say I'm going to, and then I never do it. But uh, apologies, guys. That was me. I had the mute button still clicked in from where I took that last swig of the water. So uh, don't know uh, how far back I was. I lost you guys at. I'll start back up here at Trey Sergeant just in case. Uh, you guys missed it, but I agreed with everything uh, Trey Sargent said. You know, pretty much echoed my comments. Offense looked good. Need to clean up the defense. Refs didn't let the guys play, but that's been the case in college basketball over the past couple of seasons, so not surprised there. Uh, Mark Alder just had some kind comments about the show and uh, hoping it pumps up the football team tomorrow, and I certainly agree. Definitely need a win on the football side, and we're going to be hosting the Football post game show tomorrow on the West Virginia Voice of College Football and Big 12 Voice of College Football channels. And we'll link that here um, on the Country Roads webcast so you can find that if you're subscribed to us here. I appreciate your kind comments there as well, John Kelly. And uh, I know Kenny also asked if West Virginia was a uh, zone or man to man. Uh, West Virginia is mainly a man to man defense. I think they'll use some zone this season uh, because Jesse Edwards is comfortable with that and because. Uh, with the lack of depth West Virginia has in the front court there with the big man, especially depending on how this a cook a cook situation pans out, fingers crossed and prayers going out there still yet. Um, playing that zone could help West Virginia stay out of foul trouble some as well, or, or at least alleviate that a little bit. So I think they'll lean more man to man as they have, you know, throughout the past, but I think they will play uh, some zone this season for those reasons. Um, but uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, yeah. Sorry about that guys. I know. <laughs> yeah, I had the mute button I clicked in. That's the second time. I've, I don't know if it's the second time. Maybe it's the third time I've done that on a live stream because you can always mute my mic when I take a swig of my coffee so uh, that you guys don't hear. But sometimes when I go to push it again, I don't click it, and uh, it just happened again. At least it was only four minutes this time. I think the last time it happened, it was like six or seven minutes. I had to put some timestamps in the comments, but uh, appreciate you guys. Hey, hey, thanks, Timothy, man. That's awfully sweet of you, um, as are you guys. But. Hey, at least you got a break from me talking for at least a couple minutes because you guys know I can ramble on. But uh, take a swig of my uh, water, and I got a fun little something I wanted to do here to close this out this post game show that we've never done on the channel here before. Yeah, John, I know, man. You think I'd know better by now? Like I said, I can turn my mic monitoring on and play it through my headset so I know if I can hear myself or not. But sometimes it gets on my nerves, so I you know, I don't like to do it even though I know it would help. But, you know, I'll do it sooner or later. But I actually got this package come in to got today, guys. I've been telling you guys I've been waiting on it to come in. So I thought for the first time ever we will do a uh, live unboxing here on the Country Roads webcast channel. Uh, I think I got everything that's got my address on it off of here. But – uh. This is uh, from uh, Sports Fans, which I believe is located in uh, Charleston or Hurricane. It's in Hurricane, West Virginia. Uh, they do great stuff here, guys. I got some other stuff in the background from them. But, uh, yeah, definitely thought, you know, why not? It came in the mail today, and I was going to, you know, I opened it up so I wouldn't have to, you know, knife it open here on the show or anything. But I was like, we'll pop it open here on the thing. But, yeah, guys, uh, check out Sports Fans. I'm going to tag them on social media and social media posts for this. But, uh you guys know what it is. I've already told you if you've been following along in the past. But new new piece for the background, the new mini helmet, uh, the Country Roads home version to match the uh, away version from last year now. And, man, uh, it looks pretty sweet. I can't lie. I like that one. That might be my favorite now. Um, Going to have to do some readjustment, readjusting to the background. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it uh, decently for you guys. It's, it's even got the... Uh, the highway outlines through it like the official one does there. See if I can get around to the back there. But, yeah, man, it looks great. They did awesome work. It's got the front plate on it and everything. So I kind of want to keep it in the box, but it, it looks better in the background out of the box, so I'll probably end up popping it out of there. But not too sure how I'm going to rearrange it yet. I'm considering I might just put another shelf right here or something, or I've also even thought about switching that out or something. Not quite sure what I'm going to do yet, but I'm uh, probably going to either do it later tonight or in the morning. So uh, you guys tune into the football post game show and you'll probably see the uh, Country Roads uh, home helmet back there now. But pretty cool. Wanted to uh, do that here on the show. Just ended up something a little bit different here. Uh, and that's uh, like I said, that's from uh, sports fans, guys. Uh, I ordered it online, but of course they haven't 
They have an in-person location, and uh, of course, they're on Facebook. But it's sportsfanswv.com, sportsfans with a Z. It's not sponsored or anything, but I just think they do uh, good work, man. So I wanted to shout them out. But yeah, pretty cool, man. I love it. Looks great. Looks great. Uh, John Kelly says, yeah, he does radio internet three days a week. Oh, you know, man, you know all about it then. You know all about it. Yeah, Leslie, thank you. I, I really like that one too. I think it looks I think it looks good. I think it looks good. Thanks, Timothy. Appreciate that, brother. And I appreciate you guys, man. Uh, great Mountaineer fans. And I know you guys enjoyed seeing the West Virginia basketball team for the first time this season, you know, getting to look at them with the new coaching staff, with all the new faces. And I thought a lot of those new faces really impressed. You know, Kirk Creasa looked great. Jesse Edwards looked fantastic. Quinn Slezinski was awesome. Offering the Vase got great potential. And then, of course, the returnees really looked good also. You know, can't shout out, can't forget to not shout out JoJo Harris and Seth Wilson. They had some good performances. And then lastly, you know, one more time, got to, you know, here at the end, you know, bookend it the same way we started it. Prayers, thoughts, great vibes out to Cook a Cook as hopefully continues to have, you know, positive recovery as we've heard some positive reports now uh, throughout this stream. But, Really appreciate you guys tuning into this post game show here on the CRW channel for the CRW Hoops side of things. We're going to be dropping CRW Hoops podcast now at least probably once a week or so moving forward. And we're going to try and do post game shows here live on the channel where we can chat with you guys following these West Virginia basketball games as much as we can throughout the season. So looking forward to doing it um, for this 2023 2024 version of the West Virginia men's basketball team especially as the next one will officially count towards the record. But here in this exhibition over George Mason, West Virginia wins it 85 to 78 and excited to, you know, tip it off with a win in an exhibition. And hopefully they'll be able to uh, tip it off with a win when it counts uh, coming up here in about 10 days, as you know, John pointed out there uh, great in the chat and looking forward to talking about that one with you guys as well. Tune into our social media to find out when our post game shows will be, when our podcast episodes release all that good stuff, plenty of Mountaineer sports content, both sports running simultaneously here. Follow us on X at WVU country roads and then country roads webcast on Facebook and Instagram. Like I said, check us out for the football post game show tomorrow on the West Virginia voice of college football channel and the big 12 voice of college football channel and be dropping plenty of content following the game here on the channel in regards to Mountaineer football. And we'll be talking plenty of Mountaineer basketball here in the near future as the season's now getting set to tip off and looks like we got a fun Mountaineer basketball club. We'll be watching this season. Appreciate you guys that have tuned in here live or watched on a playback and then encourage you guys you know drop your thoughts there in the comments if you did get a chance to watch on the playback i'll try and respond in text form if you didn't get a chance to tune in here live and drop them in the chat but appreciate everyone that did drop them in the chat live always appreciate y'all tuning in and chiming in we love y'all here at the country roads webcast and uh really appreciate everyone throughout Mountaineer nation that supports the Mountaineers as we do it's going to be a fun basketball season and really fun time here with both sports coexisting and we're looking forward to covering them and chatting with you guys more in the future. Having said that, as always, I'm Jordan Cruz, and until next time, let's go Mountaineers.